three consecutive days. Olin Buchanan, Texags with us on 365 Sports, also was at the press conference. His question is the one, in fact, a couple of them that we aired earlier in the show. Olin, thank you very much. Uh, there's rivalries and then there's savagery. Well, how would you uh, how would you describe what's happened? Uh, it says, I stole that, I think, from Cedric Golden without knowing about it. Your thoughts about what's been going on? Um. Gosh, my thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that um, I think that Jim Schlossnagel becomes the uh, Texas a and version of Judas and Brutus and Judas, Brutus, and Schloss. They're like three of a kind. Um, you know, it's it's one thing if you leave to go to Arkansas or Oklahoma or even Baylor. But to leave a and to go to Texas, and and that would be bad enough. Uh, I mean, think about it. I know. I mean, I don't know what your allegiances are now, but it seems like when we were hanging out back at Tyler, you were a big Nebraska fan. Yep. What if, what if on the that Nebraska's playing in the Orange Bowl for the national championship, you find out Tom Osborne's talking to Oklahoma. And then the next day, he leaves for Oklahoma. You know, I mean, it's, there's so many levels of outrage uh, uh, in that, you know, in the story. But, you know, it's college athletics. And I tell myself never to be surprised by anything involving college athletics and never believe anything you hear when it involves college athletics. Olin, um you know, this this more than likely did not get done over a couple of hours after a oh, no. got done. Um, it's, it's been discussed widely in the college baseball community. I'm sure you guys have heard the rumors. How much did you guys believe it or not believe it? And, you know, where did it direct your reporting on that? Because it's got to be a confusing situation when you've got Jim Schlossnagel, his best friends, the AD at, at Texas, but... You know, he's got everything he wants at A&M except for his best friend. Like, all those things are very confusing when you're trying to to talk about uh, him potentially leaving. Yeah, you know, my best friend, Cedric Golden, he <laughs> lives in Austin. I live in College Station. In fact, yeah. I wrote my column from his house. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't feel the need to have to live in the same town as him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that said... It becomes very confusing, especially when you hear things. You know, we've been hearing things, uh, especially Billy and Ryan Broninger and Richard Zane, who cover directly baseball for us. And they heard things going on as early as, uh, gosh, I guess they said when uh, A&M played George, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but it would have been in May. Uh you know, you, you bring it to somebody's attention. Oh, no, 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 there's nothing to that. Oh, coach, you sure? No, I'm fine here. I'm fine here. And then it gets all the way up to Monday. Of course, the story never goes away. And that, at first, you think, well, you know, that's Texas being Texas, but it never goes away. And then, though, when you talk, you know, when Richard Zane, you saw it, the, the post game interview on a uh, press conference on uh, Monday night. So when, Someone asked the question, hey, what about it? Hey, that's a selfish question. I came to Texas A&M as a final job, and I've not changed my mind. Technically, he did not say I'm staying at A&M, mm-hmm. but he absolutely implied he did. And by the way, he got up, and I guess this should have been a warning. He got up uh, after feigning all this outrage at the question and left without uh, – allowing time for a follow-up for somebody, you know, cynical like me to say, well, coach, wait a minute. You didn't actually say you're coming back Mm -hmm. to Texas A&M, are you? So uh, he gave every indication that that he was, that that he was committed to A&M. And the whole time, I believe, I believe that they're saying something different. I'm going to say, I think they're lying. Uh, Both he and Chris O'Connor, I think they're lying. I think, uh, They've been working behind the scenes for, for several weeks. What did you think of his apology towards Richard Zane earlier today? Uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was nice. I, I, I wonder how, 
I wonder how sincere it was. And I wonder if it's because he felt bad about Richard, who, by the way, they always had a good relationship. In fact, uh, Schloss had given him the nickname Big Shooter. Um, but I have to say, you know, he gives a, uh, an apology, but then starts, you know, quantifying it. Yeah, you know, the game was over with, and I was so he goes right back to that. Mm-hmm. I think it's basically if he didn't realize that it was brought to his, his attention that he's looking like a major league ass in, on a national stage. And so he felt the need that, to apologize. Olin, with the room, if the room, the rumors were out there for what a month or two, how much do you feel like? What was it a part of the message boards at Texags, or was it something that because it was such a successful, almost dream season, there wasn't going to be much to, to kind of interrupt that? Well, you know, and, and it was beyond the message boards because, like I said, Billy Lucy and Ryan Broninger. Uh, you know, Ryan Bronner's is really connected because he's a baseball coach. He's connected to a lot of baseball guys. And he had people in the community that he would say, hey, dude, I'm telling you, we keep hearing this and it's not going away. And I thought, okay, well, I, you know, I got to discuss this with Billy. And Billy said, I'm talking to people. And uh, part of them were, was they would go to Schloss Hagel and people in the program and be reassured that, not, you know, that, that you know, it's all taught. Uh, and then as it kept on, they said, you know, do we really want to, and, and you can debate whether or not they were right or not. Do we really want to, at this point, when they're in the playoffs and making a run at a possible national championship, do you want to break that story or even bring it up uh, until the season's over because A&M hasn't won a national championship since 1939. They had an absolutely – an opportunity to do so. And I'm talking about men's uh, sure. uh, sports. And they have an opportunity to do so. Do you want to be, uh, what if it turns out to be nothing? Do you want to be responsible for possibly derailing that? So it was a, um, it was a, uh, a difficult situation to be in. And that ultimately they said, hey, no, let's let it play out. Uh, but because, because we keep checking on it and we keep being reassured, that it's uh, it's all talk and there's nothing to be worried about. But, you know, obviously they were not being reassured. They were being lied to. Olin, uh, do you have any idea who's on on the no. board? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, you know, I thought it – my first reaction was I thought it would be a great idea to offer Noah Kane the uh, first assistant coach yeah. because, you know, you then maybe you – keep some of your guys who uh, are familiar with him and screw over Schlossagel in the process. But I do think that they're going to uh, look to see who's the best, absolutely best coach available. They can afford it. And, uh, you know, a is committed to its baseball program as it is to most of it, or it's not all of its sports. So I've heard other people that know more about college baseball than I do. They, uh, the coach at Clemson would be a great uh, guy to contact. Maybe the coach at Wake Forest. Um, maybe a, a highly regarded assistant in the SEC. I don't know who that is. But I do feel confident that they're going to swing for the proverbial fences, uh, get a guy in that they feel like they can can, can keep A&M playing at a elite level and you know, keep that program at that level. And then uh, somebody that they can get it done rather quickly because once the, the portal closes on July 2nd, you better get something done rather quickly or next year could be a wash. Oh, and I know that uh, the, the answer is probably be different. Uh, it's a very personal answer as far as people uh, will go with the, the run that Texas A&M just had and now the way that it ended, but – what a special season it was. I mean, it was an incredible season, incredible final game, incredible championship series. Um, do you think – I know it's all fresh right now, so it's probably hard to say. And, and like I said, different strokes, different folks. But do you think this season will still be remembered fondly or do you think it's kind of been tarnished by the way that it ended? No, because I think it'll be remembered fondly because, uh, you know, most of the of the uh, memories and all those things are going to be focused on players. They're going to be focused on Braden Montgomery coming in and yeah. playing great and hitting a bunch of home runs. And Jace Lavalette and Caden Kent 
uh, coming in when Braden was hurt and hitting a grand slam to uh, beat Oregon and playing so well in the championship game. And Evan Oshenbeck being the best relief pitcher and, and uh, Brian Prager coming back from Tommy John surgery to be a uh, play, pitch at an All-American level and a freshman, Caden Sorrell, uh, robbing uh, uh, a home run against South Carolina to, to help you win. And all those kind of plays, I think that's what uh, it was. A, it was a great atmosphere at, at Blue Bell Park every game. Uh, they were playing Latino music anytime Ali uh, Camarillo came to the plate. Uh, they played, you probably saw the Rattling Bog at home runs. Of course, there's always the bubble. I think it was just a a great year, and they'll look at it finally, just like we look at 2020. Man, what a great year! We don't think about, oh, well, you know, uh, too bad that was the the peak for uh, Jimbo Fisher. Or we don't look back at 2012 and say, man, what a great fun football season with Johnny Manziel. Too bad Kevin Sumlin turned out to be a bad coach. Uh, all in. Not only the story of getting kicked in the nuts because of Schlossnagel leaving and whatever the background story is, it appears as if this was something that was being worked on how many days or weeks ago. But then yep. to, to then lose the game. And now yep. you have lost your coach, his staff, in case somebody, like you said, would have been an, an, a nice res, uh, replacement. And now the roster has been shredded. Could this be any worse for a and Well, we'll see because the, the roster, is it shredded? Guys, like Chris Cortez last year went in the transfer portal and stayed. Right. So if, if you get a good coach in right away, you know, maybe you salvage a lot of that roster. I think the, a lot of those guys love playing for Texas a So if you get the right coach in, maybe you get Jace Lavalette to stay and Caden uh, Sorrell to play, stay and Caden can't. Maybe. I'm not saying you will. But if you lose all those guys, yeah, it, it could be the worst, the absolute worst case scenario where, you know, it's an absolute disaster. But you also got to consider, like, let's say you get, and I'm, I don't even know the Clemson coach's name. Let's say you get the Clemson coach. Does he bring a lot of guys with him from a good team? Mm. Uh, you know, that's always possible. So um, it, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in the next very few days. Uh, because it could have a profound impact on what happens with Texas A&M baseball next season. But, you know, I will say this. A&M baseball has been good before Schlossnagel. It'll, it'll be good after. It'll just be a question of when. How would you describe the mentality of A&M fan base right now? Pissed off. You know? I mean, it's like, uh, well, what if your spouse uh, left you for your, for your worst enemy, right? Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's really anger. Uh, they would have been anger anyway because he went to Texas, but it's especially anger because he went to Texas and they feel like they were lied to up until you know up until Monday night. Mm-hmm. So you know it's bad enough that someone uh, does you does you bad, but man, when they're lying about it and and now. You know, now there's a story, and I don't. And at this time, David, I don't know how much, how factual it is, how much Joe Legs has actually had. But now there's a story coming out that so a, a former player is accusing them of uh, they were re- recruiting against A and M while coaching for A and M and being paid for A and M. So we'll have to see how that story, uh, uh, you know, works out. You know that yeah, were you. Is that the one where the burner phones were brought up? Yeah. 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 yeah whether it's true or so, not, we don't know. Yeah. Well, we don't know. But what if it is? I mean, then uh, you wonder, does the NCAA get involved? Probably not. They don't get involved with anything anymore. Uh, does Greg Sankey get involved? Probably not. He doesn't seem to care as long as a lot of money's coming in. Uh, does A&M have a legal uh, basis to do if that's all true? I don't know. It may be just you know one la- one more crazy thing about sports, and you deal with it, and move on. Uh, but I, I do think it's uh, it's going to be a story that's going to stay in the news for about another uh, week or, 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 or day or two. And it's funny, you know, just about a week ago, I was talking to somebody. I said, you know, it's nice having Mike Elko here because 
we're not having a whole lot of drama. Right. Right. Now we got a whole lot of drama. <laughs> How much pressure is on Trev Alberts? That's a great question. I don't blame him for Sawsegel leaving. Uh, Sawsegel made it sound like, again, I think things were going on. Uh, now, I think Sawsegel might have wanted a different athletic director, maybe a friend of his. And, uh, you know, maybe that played into it. But um, I think. Uh, I don't blame him for that, but I think he, you know, look, baseball is the second most popular sport at Texas A&M. You you can't deny it. Uh, I think most places basketball would be, but baseball is the second most popular sport at Texas A&M. And they just committed $80 million, or they approved uh, last month, the Board of Regents approved $80 million for uh, uh, renovations and upgrades to Blue Bell Park. So I think it's very important that they make the right call on a, on a baseball coach, but not only do you have to be right, but you have to be right fast. So I think he's under a lot of pressure to make the right decision in a small amount of time. Olin Buchanan, Tech Sags with us on 365 Sports. Oh, I just have a favor. When Jim Schlossnagel comes back, can you make sure uh, that I, I, I can, like – string for you guys or something that day <laughs> so I can get a credential because I I would love to be in attendance to hear that first wave of uh, – I don't think Booze is going to quite come. Well, he's not going to be back until 26 because the yeah. games, the series next year, right, Owen, are 25 right. in Austin? Yeah. That's why you think I'm asking now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get ahead of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. that'll, that'll give him two years to add uh, probably up to 10,000 seats at Bluebell and – uh, a bunch of pissed off Aggies give them two years to scheme and plan for whatever they can do to uh, make uh, uh, Sloss Nagel's uh, life miserable that night. Well, uh, there's no doubt. Tell us about Richard Zane, who who all of a sudden just asked a, a, a legitimate and fair question, got blistered. We now know what Sloss has said since that time. Sloss Nagel, speaking of getting blistered, got hammered around the country uh, tell us about him, how he handled it, and, and how, you know, I'm not trying to act like he's emotionally distraught, but how has it been for him? Well, it, it, for a while it was tough because, um, and I'm sure y'all run into this up in Waco, uh, if you criticize or even look like you're criticizing a coach that's successful, a lot of times uh, people take it personally, hey, you're attacking my coach mm-hmm. and whatnot, and, and uh, so, so he ran into some of that on our message board. And then, you know, he's a young kid. He's about, he might be 25. Uh, he's either in grad school at A&M or just finishing up. One of the most conscientious young men I've ever worked with. He, uh, for a long time, he, he proved, he proved reason that it's my copy and actually does it. You know, he doesn't just like run it through the spell check and say, okay, it's done. Mm-hmm. He actually does. He's a very conscientious kid who loves baseball and has done a great job covering that team. And like I said, I had a great relationship with, with, uh, Schloss Nagel. And he asked a question that needed to be asked. And he got, uh, skewered for it from the coach and some fans. Now, a lot of the fans have come back and apologized to him as well. They should. And quite frankly, I told him, look, uh, you know, his feelings were hurt a little bit. And I get that. I said, first off, you're going to do this business. A lot of times you're going to be the bad guy, even if you're really not. And secondly, Embrace it because you know what? Uh, every editor that might be looking for a writer everywhere is saying, I need a guy like that who will ask the tough question and that tough setting. He's kind of a, at least for a little while, he's getting his 15 minutes. He's a celebrity right now. Did you, if you would have had a chance to follow up Sloss's answer, as you mentioned, what would you have said? What was the, what was the question you have now, asked? The same thing I said to Jimbo Fisher when we had a, Similar conversation uh, when LSU was supposedly interested to, in him, like in 2021, and he gave one of those non-committal answers. I said, "Coach, uh, uh, and forgive me for for not understanding, but I just need clarification. Are you saying you will be the head coach unequivocally at Texas A&M next season? And you know, put it so blunt that they have to answer. But he's a young kid." And I'm a grizzled old codger uh, that, that, you know, has been through this a million times, just like you have, David. So uh, 
I guarantee if Richard ever finds himself in that position, he'll probably be quick with a follow-up to say, are you, so are you saying that you will be back and put it on the coach to actually have to make uh, or you can't dance around it with some fancy footwork or, uh, you know, open-ended quotes. Thank you, man. Appreciate your time with just kind of the insight from your perspective, being there today and watching this thing unfold the last couple of three days. Thanks for your time, Olin. Have a, great to talk to you again. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Olin Buchanan, TechSags.com with us on 3.